Welcome back to Open Line tonight. John Navin is here from John Navin and Associates, a financial advisor we talk to once a month, trying to keep everything in order in our lives. And when I say everything today, I'm not just talking about finances, but the physical aspect of it, the mental, the spiritual, and the financial aspect of the life. As we delve into 2016, just 11 days in now, and it's yes. been a wild ride already on the stock market, yeah. stock market as we were talking about, which can make you feel a little bit out of balance. You were telling us your story from 2005 when, when you kind of red flags went up in your life and you're like yeah. this is this is not the life that I want to lead things were out of balance for you and you went on about a year journey working on yourself uh, with the help of some coaches what came of that what differences did you what changes did you make in your life oh okay in 2005 was probably the that was the result of lots of coaching so that <coughs> first coach I started with was uh, I was in the 90s it was probably 97 mm -hmm. was the first one. I was with him for three or four years, still communicate with him. Uh, and then I did a, a uh, another coach called Strategic Coach, and his philosophy or his ideas uh, and concepts were all about unique ability. And if you look in corporate America today, it, typically people will say, you know what, focus on your weaknesses. Capitalize on your strengths, but mm -hmm. focus on your weaknesses. Well, if, the, if you do that, 20 years later, you're going to have very strong weaknesses. Yeah. There's still going to be weaknesses. So, uh, in going through his program, we spent three and a half, four, year, four years with him. I was with him. Um, and we would meet once a quarter, four times a year, and really talk about what's your unique ability, um, different concepts and strategies. How do you set up your days? You know, from free days, focus days, buffer days, typically everybody puts all their days together and mm -hmm. it's just days. Well, yeah. No, you really got to look and say, all right, what what do I want this day to be and what do, how do I want to time block? And so we talk about time blocking a little bit. Um, otherwise, everything becomes this. There's no peaks and there's no valleys. Everything is... Mm. Yeah, and before you look back, it's like, oh, there went 2015. Yeah. 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 What did I do that year? I don't mm. know. Just kind of coasted through life. Yeah. And most people don't write it down. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have a, you know, the old saying is, you know, we don't have a target, so we hit it with 100% accuracy. <laughs> so we just kind of float through life. Yeah. And so I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to do that. Right. So all this coaching, oh, so all this, <laughs> it led to this book eventually. Yes, you yes, yes. You kind of put it Sorry. all together. Yeah. And this so book I, is called Personal Balance. Personal Balance Blueprint. Blueprint. And, um, what it is, or what, what happened from that is we're, again, that the spawn of the personal, physical, and financial life, you have to pull them all together and you need to, to focus on all three of them. And it, uh, we did a radio show in Chicago. So let me back up, but yes, so, <laughs> so talking to me is like talking to <laughs> We're going everywhere. Pinball machine. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, so what happened? I'll, I'll pull it all together and I'll quit being silly. The um, the book actually then came together and we pulled key points from each one of those areas and said, okay, if you're going to have a great life, what do you do mm -hmm. and how do you do it? And so uh, we wrote the book, or I wrote the book in you know, probably about 2005, 2006, wanted it to become more of a guidebook, a coaching program, more so than a book that you pick up, look at, thumb through, and you put it on the shelf and you don't do anything right. with. So what, what came out of that is a, um, a corporate training program. Because my belief is that if you can get people in a captive situation, which is AKA the, the workforce, mm -hmm. if you can get them at work uh, and you can get employers, you can change people's lives. Because they'll take the time, because they're there, um, they'll take the time to work on themselves. Whereas I, we had some, some struggles if you, you know, okay, hey, you, you worked all day, you're tired. Right. Now it's time to come back and work on yourself and be like, eh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm, I'm clocked out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you got kids and you got life yes. and we're trying to eat healthy and cook healthy and, you know, read books and do all the stuff that everybody tells us we're supposed to do to be superhumans. Right. And it's just, there's just no time. And so. you get lost in that mix. One thing I noticed about yeah. this book as I was thumbing through it was um, goal setting in every aspect of your life is so very important, especially when it comes to finances, mm -hmm. knowing where you are and where you want to go, and being very specific and, and putting your name to it, saying, I'm going to do this, I commit to this. Yes, yeah. Um, without a doubt, in, in a, a few keys with goals when we take people through is, you know, they've got to be specific, of mm -hmm. course, or you've, you've heard that before. Um, we've got to have some way to measure them. We've got to know what is it you want specifically. You have to have a date. So there's got to be a date that you want to complete it by, so you have to have a proper timeline. With that being said, too, there's, there's no such thing as a bad goal. People think... Really? Yeah. Like, my goal is to win the Powerball. 
That's a bad goal. That's what I thought. Yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> you can't control that one. I'm just. He said there was no bad goal. There are bad goals. All right. Let me be more accurate. <laughs> let me be more specific. Um, if you have a goal that you're trying to achieve, uh, there isn't a necessarily a bad goal. It just means you may have to do some more th things to get that goal accomplished. For example, you may say, "I want to be a uh, CEO of a Fortune 500 company." Not a bad goal, but you're going to have to take some steps in between there to become a CEO of a sure. Fortune 500 company. You may say, I want to start saving $200 a month, $1,000 a month. Okay, but if you're in debt and you're in, um, mm -hmm. you know, behind here, we've got to take a few few steps. You may have to learn something new. Um, but when I say there's no such thing as a bad goal, if it doesn't mean it's a bad goal, it might just be a bad time frame. So, for example, I've wanted to weigh 180 pounds for about five years. So one of these days, I'm going to hit <laughs> 180. Um, so hopefully it's this year. But yeah, I write it down. Yeah, I've been writing it down most every year. And my wife looks and says, honey, that's awesome. I'm, I'm excited for it. And she's very encouraging. God bless her. She's a wonderful woman. And, you know, to, to, to look and go, yeah, no, didn't make it. <laughs> yep, yep, didn't make it. But you've got to know what your why is. Right. So why do you want to be... 180, or why do you want to be the CEO of the Fortune, or why do you want to save money? Mm -hmm. What What is it that's important to you? Um, and what are you going to accomplish once that happens? And those are the things that you have to think about. So when you write down a goal, it needs to be, why am I doing this, and then how am I going to do it, and when am I going to do it by? When, yeah, and put a date. And you have to have some, on a scale of 1 to 10, you have to have a, a feeling of 7 or above that it's important to you. For example, okay. if, um, you know, whatever the goal might be. I want to be 180, okay? Mm -hmm. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is that to you? Well, this year, it's gotten a little bit more serious, so I'd say it's probably an 8 or a 9. In years past, if you said you wanted to be 180, well, 5. Well, if it's a 7 or below, you really don't care. You know, it's written down, but you really don't have a visceral, You're I want to go You're not investing in that goal. No, no. It's, just, it's just, yeah, it's there. It's a thought. Mm-hmm. And in, in along the, the same path of goals, we talk a lot about, you know, we said out of balance. Mm -hmm. I think the first step is really to look and say, what does an out of balance life look like to you? Mm. And this is where it's different for everybody. So if we're looking at five different areas, and we'll look at, you know, we look at spiritually, we look at family, social, uh, financial work, personal, uh, and personal encompasses physically and emotionally. So if you said, okay, um, maybe spiritual. Uh, if spiritual is important to you and, um, you know, it was important to go to some kind of worship service, regardless of where it is or what it is, once a week or once a month, whatever it is for you, if you look back and you go, oh my gosh, I have not been to X to worship in the last six months, I am really way out of balance, yeah. Or I haven't done this, mm -hmm. I'm really left. Um, family and social. So... You know, um, I wanted to have dinner with the family once a week. I wanted to sit down at the dinner table with nice silverware and plates and really talk about family, you know, nice stuff. Sure. If that's not happening, then you go, oh, my gosh, I'm way over here. Um, so there's lots of ways you really look and say what's out of balance. And you can keep on track, if it, especially if it's written down. They yeah. can look back and go, oh. Yeah. He need to hold see. himself accountable. Yeah. This isn't happening. Let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah, exactly. When it, when it comes to, you mentioned how lovely your wife is. I know my husband and I write down goals every year. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can be very personal to exchange those and say, this is what I want. He says, this is what I'm going for. And sometimes let's say financially, maybe those things don't match they up. Don't match. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Then you get kind of in a sticky point. What do you do there? Wine. <laughs> <laughs> I like that answer. <laughs> Wine is the answer. Because <laughs> on those sort of things, yeah. you're doing life together, and yeah. you've got to find some common ground. Yeah. And, uh, and so true. It, and we teach a class, a retirement class, and I'm going to come full circle. But the same holds true when you start talking about budgeting. Mm -hmm. And so during my class, I'll sit down. Now, for a couple of you, you may want to have a glass of wine before you have this conversation <laughs> because to your husband, golf may be important, but it's not important to you. Right. And manicure, pedicure may be mm -hmm. important to some females, and that sounds really sexist, so I don't mean it like yeah, that. It could be the other way be, around. Sure. I mean, it could be golf for the females and pedicures for the males. Could be. Pedicures are nice. Um, I think what you do, the answer to that is to find a common ground, you know, just like you do in, to be married. You sure. look and you say, all right, how do we meet in the middle? Mm -hmm. What are we going to say? And some things are naturally, we do the same thing, are more important to her 
than they are to me, and some things are more important to me than they are. So you just gotta. I found if I give my husband about 12 hours lead time, like, hey, we need to go over the budget tomorrow night. Yeah. Then he's got time to like, he can you know, process it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> then he gets ready for it. <laughs> and nobody wants to do that ever go over their budget. Never, I do. ever. I like doing okay, it. Let me rephrase that. Very few people like to go through their, but call it a spending yes. plan. Yes. Oh, that's Let's a good call, idea. Let's call it a spending plan. Oh, Let's review our I spending like plan. Budget sounds like a bad. I'm going to try that this see month. See if that works. <laughs> okay, spending plan. <laughs> All right, we're going to take All a quick right. break. As I told you before, the line is open. We are talking about finances, health, wealth, you name it. We're going to talk about it. 737 plus is the number to call. We'll be right back.